Welcome back to Project 380 and today it's time for the Timon Belt. Before the Timon Belt goes on we do have to put a few more things on and I'm going to start off with the water pump. Now when it comes to water pumps there really is only three options. Choice number one is a cheaper water pump with a metal pressed impeller. Option number two is a Gates water pump with a cast impeller. Option number three is to just blank this off and use an electrical water pump elsewhere in the car. I have gone with option number two of the Gates water pump purely because I trust the cast impeller a lot more than I trust the metal pressed one. So to pop this on, there is a gasket that sits here. Now this step is optional, but it is advised. And to put a little bit of sealant paste on this face of the water pump and on the gasket itself. The gasket can only go on one way, so it's pretty obvious if you get it wrong. and then a little bit more seal and paste on this side of the gasket. And then carefully pop it on, try not to disturb the gasket. The water pump bolts need to be torqued to 14 to 18 foot pounds. You don't want to put on the water pump pulley yet as it will get in the way, that will come later. Next to go on is the coolant water neck which sits here, which is this. This contains the thermostat, but I'm not going to be using this anymore. I will cover this more in future episodes. But in my case I have made this little plate with a 6AN fitting in the front of it. It's got a little groove in the back to hold a little bit of silicon as well. We will cover why this is here in a future episode, but it needs to go on before all the timing belt. So a little bit of RTV in the groove. Pop it on. Pop the bolts in. Then I'm just going to give them a little nip as it's a steel bolt going into an aluminium head. So it doesn't need to be too tight and I don't want to over tighten it and bend the aluminium. Now to go on this I have a 45 degree 6AN fitting which also needs to go on now. Now for the head timing plate, pretty important that this goes on now as it fits behind the cams. Give these a good nip down as you don't want these coming loose behind all the timing belt. Now we can get to installing the cam pulleys. Now as you can see in the camshafts themselves on the end are two locating dowels. We need to spin these to the 12 o'clock position. And to do this on the cams there are hexes here and here. Just grab yourself an adjustable, gently spin it round. Try not to smash the adjustable on any of the castings. Now I am not using the stock cam pulleys, 
I am using Block's Vernier Cam Pulleys. These are very similar, but you can adjust the timing manually on each. Inside the pulleys, hopefully you can see an I, an E, and a Z. Now this is the intake pulley. This is the Mark II, so it has the cam sensor at the front of the engine, which uses these three dowels. Now, because this is the intake pulley, the dowel that we've got on our cam actually needs to sit inside the eye slot on the pulley itself. Like so. And the dowel on the exhaust cam needs to sit in the slot with the E on it. On the bolts I've put a little bit of blue Loctite. These need to be torqued up to 37 to 44 foot pound. Now because these are a rotating part and you need to stop them spinning, just pop your spanner back on the hex and torque them up. Now for the timing belt idler, a little bit of blue Loctite on the bolt. This is torqued to 27 to 38 foot pound. And then for the tensioner pulley, this little hole here needs to slide over this little pin in the water pump. And then put the bolt in, but don't torque it up just yet. Make sure you're still able to move the tensioner backwards and forwards. Next is for the timing pulley, which sits on the nose of the crank. And as you can see, the crank has a keyway and so does the pulley. So pop that on the crank, roughly line the keyways up and then slide the new Woodruff key in. Don't worry if you think the Woodruff key is sticking out too far of the crank, this is right. This is usually the stage where you would put on the harmonic balancer faceplate, but this isn't the case for me. So, this faceplate holds on. The standard four tooth trigger wheel and the standard harmonic balancer. Now, after 20 odd years on the car, this is absolutely useless. So how this works is there's an inner pulley, solid bonded rubber, and then the outer pulley. This was originally designed for the standard engine to remove some harmonics that came in at a certain rev range. Now, this isn't a standard engine. The harmonics in this are going to be in a different range than what this was designed for. Now because this is 20 or so years old it's not doing its job anymore due to the fact that the rubber is old and perished and can't take out the harmonics. Now there are a couple of options when you come to replace this. If you've got the standard engine replace it with a standard one and it will be fine as you're not changing the balance of the engine at all but I am turbocharging it so it will be different and the harmonics are going to be in a completely unknown place now the second option is an ATI super damper with this part of the pulley built into it and the other option is a fluid amper now there's a couple of things that need to be done to this before it goes on the engine Sam from the future here to tell you why you actually need a harmonic balancer. Harmonics in the engine can be a very bad thing. They could lead to the crank twisting, but cranks don't twist so they just snap. They can lead to failed bearings, which is also really bad. And it can lead to the oil pump vibrating around and shattering, and then losing all oil pressure and killing your engine. So the old harmonic balancer and the new fluid amper look very different. 
The old one was held in with the four smaller bolts, whereas this one is held in by the big main bolt. If we flip over the new fluid amber, the face plate is built into this. And this is what's going to clamp down our trigger wheel. Now I'm also changing trigger wheels from the 4 tooth trigger wheel to a 36 minus 1 trigger wheel. You will learn more about this in a later video. Now I actually bought this from Scuzzle Motorsports before they closed down and it's been a little bit hard for me to get information on this but I've come to the conclusion that it goes that way round so that when the key weight is at the 12 o'clock position the gap in the trigger wheel is about the 7 o'clock position. On the face plate there is a locating dial which slides through the trigger wheel in the hole there and into the damper. And then the four little 5mm Allen keys, a little bit of blue Loctite And the instructions that come with the fluid damper just say to hand tighten these bolts. Now that we know how the harmonic balancer fits, we're going to have to loosely place the timing belt on the bottom pulley, this side of the idler, and just loosely hang it there for now. The bottom engine cover with the timing marks also has to go on first as well. Now the new balancer can be slid on and the bolt put in with a little bit of blue Loctite. Now I can torque up the main crank pulley bolt that needs to be done to 120 foot pound and as you can see I've got a pry bar in the back with two old flywheel bolts to stop the whole crank rotating as I torque it up. So now I need to get the crank pulley into the top dead centre position. Which is there when this mark lines up with the T mark on this cover. So now we want to align our cam pulleys. This looks a little bit different on these aftermarket pulleys than it would do on the standards. But even these aftermarket ones have an indent. I've just coloured them in to make it easier to see. But on this timing plate on the back here that we put on before the cam pulleys, there are two diagonal marks, which I've also coloured in so it's easier to see. We need to align the indents in the pulleys with the lines on the back end plate. And it's easy to do. Just use the hex that we used earlier on the cams to rotate them. Now to put the timing belt on the pulleys, pull it up from the exhaust side of the engine, make sure it's located on the bottom pulley, then slot it in the exhaust cam, turn the intake cam clockwise ever so slightly. Once the belt is on the intake pulley, turn it back to the timing mark and then carefully, without moving any of the pulleys, pop the timing belt the right side of the tensioner. Now to install the tensioner spring, hook it under the tensioner, grab yourself a flat blade screwdriver or a pick.
and hook it onto the pin on the water pump. Now turn the engine over twice. And then torque down the tensioner 27 to 38 foot pound. and then turn the engine over two more times. Now to make sure everything's timed up correctly, the top dead center mark should line up with this mark here. The exhaust cam should line up with the marking on the timing plate and so should the intake cam. Now a quick check of the belt deflection in the Haynes manual it says to do it this way in between the two pulleys and it should have a deflection of about 10 mil. Simply press in the middle and see how far it moves. If it's successive movement the timing is probably a 2 bow. That's all for this episode. If you learned anything or if this video helped you do your timer belt, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.